Hey guys, welcome back to Airman Vision, and if you're new, consider subscribing. Today, we talked to Andre Acosta, who's a tech sergeant in the Air National Guard as a recruiter. We asked him a bunch of questions about tuition and education while in the Air National Guard. Today we have Tech Sergeant Acosta, he's in the Air National Guard, and we're going to be answering some questions about college tuition, going to college while you're in the Air National Guard. But first, I want to just have you introduce yourself, what you do for the Air National Guard, and how people can contact you, and then a brief overview of your time in the Air Force. Yeah, thanks. So I'm Andre Acosta, I'm a recruiter for the California Air Guard, and I've been in the Air Force 18 years now. Started 13 years in the active duty side and then five years in the Air National Guard, also known as the Air Guard. I, I've been able to have a, a wealth of experience, you know, started off at uh, Beale Air Force Base in California, then moved, transferred or PCS permanent change of station to Osan Air Force Base, Korea, then Virginia at Langley Air Force Base, on to Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii, where I went and joined the Hawaii Air National Guard and then the Wyoming Air National Guard and then now finally the California Air National Guard, which is home for me. You know, I'm born and raised in California and it, it's great to be able to serve my local state. You know, I'm, I literally stationed 40 minutes from where I grew up and, and this will be my last assignment. So it's really just about giving back, helping the next generation of enlistees as, as they make the decision of what branch to join and how to make the best moves for for their future and their career. If, if anybody has any questions, you know, or, or would like more information about the California Air Guard, just feel free to send me a text or call me directly on my work cell. It's 805-415-7269. Again, that's 805-415-7269. All right, so like we said, we're gonna be answering some questions or I'm gonna be asking and you're gonna be answering about college, tuition, all that stuff, right? Because education benefits are a huge reason that a lot of people join the military. So it was no surprise when we asked for questions about the Air National Guard that we got several that had to do with college and tuition and just the education aspect of things. So the biggest question was, can you go to college when you're in the Air National Guard? Absolutely. So when, when you think about the different Air Force options, like active duty Air Force, reserve, or guard, I would say in my, uh, my opinion, and I know I'm a little bit biased, but like the, the Air Guard is the best Air Force option to go to college with. And, and I'll tell you why, you know, simply it's because we're part-time. So that means you have time to be a full-time college student, right? Because you need time to go to college, right? Uh, you know, it, it, college takes time, it takes energy. So being a part-time member of the Air Guard, having the Air Guard pay for college, is a huge benefit. So you're not having to worry about cost of college and then you have the time to focus on your studies. So the next question on top of that, you know, people wanted to know, can I join or can I join the Air National Guard and go to college? But if I can go to college, who's gonna pay for it? Am I gonna pay for it? Are they gonna pay for it? Are they gonna pay for half? Am, am I gonna have to take out student loans? How is, is that process gonna work? So how much or do they pay at all for you to go to college? Yeah, so it's actually fairly generous and in each state because, you know, the Air National Guards are state specific, each state is going to have different educational benefits. So I can only talk about California, but there's going to be similarities and applicabilities between the states. Now, to get the college benefit, you do have to be a fully trained Air Guardsman. So that does mean you have to graduate basic training and tech school. And then when you get back from tech school, you'll have access to that funding. Now, I'll, I'll list some of the funding examples that we get as Air Guardsmen. So you do get access to the Montgomery GI Bill, right? Okay. So that is currently three fifty. I want to excuse me, three fifty a month as a full time student. That's going and taking at least four classes a semester, right? And then you do get access, like our base in particular gets access to Air Force tuition assistance, which is the same that active duty and the reserve gets. That's thirty seven hundred a year and then also as a california air guardsman or california national guardsman you have access to the california national guard education assistance 
award program, which is a really long title <laughs> and acronym, but essentially, depending on the type of school you go to, they'll pick up the tab for tuition. It's much like the Cal Grant, which is a California grant. So you apply for it every year. But if you were to give some math and some examples, right, if you go to Cal State University Northridge, right, which is about 5000 a year, they'll pick up the full tab for your tuition. So it's a full ride there. Uh, if you go to UCLA, which is a fairly popular, if you're a Bruin fan, right, that's they'll pay up to 12000 a year for that. Um, for private schools, they'll only pay 9000 So if you're a Trojan, like a USC fan, unfortunately, that's not going to be enough. That's what I was going to ask about USC because that's, that's a big school. Yeah, that, so. that's a big one, man. But uh, so you can, of course, for there? 9000 a year with that. Now, okay. you can you do get there's a couple different things. USC does offer a yellow ribbon program, so you can tap into that. And it's just different, different pools of money. Some of those schools, those uh, really – Popular schools do get a little bit pricey, but it's nice to have that funding. If you go to a local or a Cal, California school, you know, they'll pick up the tab entirely. All right. So on top of going to college, right, you already said that we can do that. But what about Air Force ROTC? That was a question that stood out to me when I read it in the comments, because I was like, yo, I never thought of that. Like, I like not just going to Air Force ROTC, but doing that while you're in the guard. Is that something you're able to do? I'm assuming they would like, they would almost like that because the point of uh, like Air Force ROTC is to commission. And so like that would help the guard if, if somebody gets that, finishes that program and then commissions. Yeah. So it's, yeah, you can absolutely do both. It, it is kind of a lot for, for somebody to do both, right? Cause you're wearing almost like two military hats simultaneously, so to yeah. speak. But the nice thing with the guard is you're getting actual, experience while you're in the guard right and we're going to pick up the tab for college once you graduate from tech school so it's immediate like we're talking about freshman year the thing with the rotc scholarships right a lot of times they're not getting those scholarships till sophomore or even junior year so they're still going to be responsible for you know your your freshman year for payment of that freshman year so yes you can absolutely do both and there's added advantages to doing both Uh, the big one is you know, getting college paid for in its entirety. And then once you do graduate from college, the ROTC will line you up straight for that commission and the air guard will let you go. They're not going to hold you back. Uh, the, you just set up a, basically a release form to our commander in the, in the air guard side. And they're going to love that. They're going to encourage you and want you to commission. So it's yeah, easy- say prior, prior service officers are, very sought after commodities for the military because they actually have an understanding of the military. Exactly. So rather than, you know, well, I've been in college and you're like, yeah, but that doesn't translate perfectly to like being in charge of a bunch of military members. If you've never been in the military. Yeah, that's exactly it. Having that experience is, it's going to be very helpful and relatable, right? Because the majority of your team is going to be enlisted. So it makes a, that much better a leader. A big fear that a lot of people have with going to college in the guard would be what happens if I deploy, right? If I'm, if I'm in the middle of my classes and they're like, Hey, we have a deployment coming up and you're like, but my classes, like, how, how does that work with somebody? So, so the air guard rarely deploys on an instant, you know, you'll have notice. It's not like, you know, the, the plane is taken off. You need to hop on, you know, in an hour, it, you'll usually have more than enough time and, and notice to finish up that semester. Like I mentioned in, in one of our other videos, there's usually a wait list for, for deployment. So you'll know when this deployment is coming and, you know, and if you're not able to deploy because you're in college, you know, usually you can go to the back of the list, right, so to speak, mm-hmm. or just say, let me get the next one. So that's not really a common issue we have. Uh, most people are able to finish that semester if it should happen or, you know, just say, I'll get the next deployment if at all. Because, and I do want to touch on this point, most of the deployments are going to be more volunteer based for the Air Guard. So that's a nice luxury we have specific to the Air Guard. I can't extend that to to the, all the other branches, but with the air guard, in my experience, that's how it's been. So what you're saying is essentially if somebody was like, well, I'm going to finish college in a year and a half, and I really don't want to put off that semester, you know, because it's going to push it out even further. So they're like, Hey, like, let me, let me skip this deployment. Once they finish their college, then it's like, Hey, I'm all for going on deployments at that point. They can kind of 
you know, um, you know, control their own future in a way. Exactly. And that's the, the big thing with the guard is having that control and that flexibility to balance, you know, whatever your full-time ambition is, whether that's full-time college student, full-time profession, you know, you can do both. So that's pretty cool. So something that we talked about earlier was that, yes, the Air National Guard can cover some of your or all of your college tuition. Something that people are interested in, and the active duty used to do this, and then they started phasing it out, I'm pretty sure. And I don't even know. I don't think it's a thing anymore. But the student loan repayment program, is that something that the Air National Guard offers? It used to be much bigger like a decade ago for active duty. But even when I joined, it was like almost unheard of. My recruiter knew nothing about it. Like even when she tried to look it up, like there was, there's not much information about it because they were trying to get away from it, I'm pretty sure. Um, because they wanted people to join when they were younger rather than go and get their student loans, then join and have us repay it back, right? They, they want to actually incentivize people to join and then we'll cover your costs. So does Air National Guard do that? If you have somebody that's already got a degree and they're coming in or, or they did two years and they, they have an associate degree, not enough to commission, but they want to go enlisted. Uh, do they cover? What so, they so at this time, unfortunately, we do not have a loan repayment program. And kind of like what you talk about with active duty, it's like hit or miss. It depends on the timing. Right yeah. now, the, the, the military and the Air Force is, is kind of uh, overmanned uh, yeah. overall, right? So that's not one of the incentives that we offer in the Air Guard. Now, now to be unbiased and fair, I, I have heard that the Army National Guard does have a loan repayment program. So if, if that's a priority to somebody, they can, of course, go uh, Army Guard and take advantage of that benefit. On the other side of the coin, you know, if, if paying back that, that loan is, is something that's on everybody's head, because I'm sure it is, right? You want to get free of that debt. You know, we do offer bonuses, job bonuses. So right now, you know, it can be anywhere from 15000 uh you know, at, at the top end for that initial job bonus. So let's just say you went security forces right now, right? 2021, you could get that 15,000. It is broken into uh, installments. You're getting half at your three-year mark and the other half at your five-year mark of your six-year enlistment. And you do have to pay taxes, right? So that's like a big, like, man, taxes kind of like a big chunk. But but again, that, that'll come out to like almost 10K that you'll have to pay, repay loans. And then something else to think about is while you're in basic training and tech school, you know, you have very few expenses, right? You know, you're, you're, you're not paying for food. Maybe you're paying for a cell phone. Usually your car insurance, you're, you're not having to pay for because it's sitting somewhere, right? So I always tell my enlistees, man, basic training and tech school is a great way to save another 10K. Very yeah. easily, you can save 10K. So that can, you can just save all that money and then put that towards that debt. So there's some, there's some, uh, some solutions there if you just get creative. And another thing to think about too, like if you're trying to get into an IV or a pretty, pretty popular school, you know, joining the Air Guard, you're on veteran status. And so that gives you some preferences out the gate out the gate so you can get into some better or, or popular schools a lot of times that would be harder to get into without that veteran status because as an air guard member immediately you're you're considered a veteran and then you have the time to go to school so i'm talking about yeah. you don't have to do that whole four-year contract on active duty i'm talking about like within a semester of joining you're already able to apply to you know some bigger name schools or transfer from your last school and so there's just so much flexibility there so that, that's really similar to applying for even jobs is we, I went to school for criminal justice. So I wanted to become a cop. And then I ended up dropping out after a year and a half and then joined the air force. But that was something I had applied at two police departments when I was still going through school. Cause I was like, might as well, you know, at least if I'm not going to get the job, at least get the experience with interviews. So once I get my degree, I've already been through the process. So it's not as scary. Right. I was trying to set myself up to be as successful as possible and not be like, I've never gone through these interviews before, but I have a degree, you know, it's like, oh, I've been through the interviews. I got my degree. Like, I'm good. Like, as soon as I graduated, I was like, I'm getting a job. So, but our instructors would always, or our professors would always joke about how um, a lot of people don't realize that if you're prior military, like, especially in law enforcement, they're like, you automatically go to the top of the stack. 
They're like, oh, you're, you're, you're a veteran or prior military. They're like, oh, yeah, you already are more qualified than everyone else. And that's it. Like, that's the only thing. It doesn't matter about college degrees. It didn't matter about this. It was like, you're already like considered the top 10% candidate if you have prior military, just because you've proven that you can follow orders, that you can listen, that you can pay attention to details, right? Like in order to be in the military, like you have to, you have to fit all those things. And so uh, that was like a big thing is not only does that help with college, like you said, you become, you know, a veteran uh, or you have veteran status when you're applying for some schools that are prestigious, but even careers later on is. That's a good point. Get your yeah, that's true. Door. You know, waking up early on a consistent basis, it sounds simple, but it's, it's a, it's a very good skill to have. <laughs> and that's I'm one of the things. I'm glad that I don't have to apply you. by that skill anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am not a morning person at all I'm like the biggest night owl so I'm like my my current job right now I have to get up early but I have one week left and then going to be able to work from home so I'm like yes I got to create my own schedule now but yeah it definitely is uh being in the military you know it's like I can't really complain all that bad about my job right now because I definitely had to be at work way earlier a lot more often in when I was in the military and then especially like basic and tech school like that first like when you first join it's like five in the morning you wake up every day and it's not like a subtle wake up at five in the morning it's like a very loud chaotic wake up like your blood is rushing right away so yeah it kind of like trips you into this mode where you're like trying to be punctual and on time and yeah so it definitely helps with uh getting a job later on um and i didn't know that about colleges either I didn't know some colleges, but it makes sense because some college may offer like incentives to get veterans to go there because they, they want you to spend your GI bill to go there. They want that tuition assistance that the military provides because that's to them. If they can convince a veteran to go there, then they get that money guaranteed. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things, too, that now that we're segueing kind of into that, what, what I encourage people to, to do if when they join the Air Guard is like in, in your circumstance, if you know what your major is, you can use the Air Guard to get job experience. So if, if for example, if it's your criminal justice major, you know, security forces is a popular uh, job, which is in law enforcement within the Air Force. So you can have that job experience to complement your major. So that I, I recommend too. That's, that's a pretty cool way to do it. So if like if somebody's interested in eventually becoming a nurse or going to med school, they could become a med tech with us or something within the medical field. Also, IT is a popular one. If you're going to major in computer science, right, you can get one of the, like, we have eight or nine different uh, IT jobs with software, hardware, networking, cybersecurity, like, you know, Air Force is big on tech. So, like, there's just so many avenues for you to, to explore and take advantage of, you know, as a college student. So I know you had touched on this a little bit earlier, but what about the GI Bill? Active duty provides the GI Bill for service members. Does the Air National Guard have access to the GI Bills? Uh, so you have the post 9-11 and the Montgomery GI Bill. Do you have access to both of those in the Air National Guard? And I know one thing in active duty for the Montgomery GI Bill, you have to opt into that in the very beginning um, or you can opt out of it in the beginning and just not pay into it because it costs $1,200, a hundred dollars a month for 12 months. Uh, so that was what was with active duty. I ended up opting into that. So I still, I haven't opted out of it yet to the post nine 11 because Montgomery is more, if you want to go like part-time to college, uh, versus post nine 11 requires, you know, more like full-time commitment. And so, having the Montgomery as an option is always a good thing. That's why I haven't opted out yet because I haven't gone back to school yet, but I'm still, you know, we're still figuring out life and getting there, but I want to hang on to that Montgomery just in case, you know, I do get a career going and then I'm like, well, I still want to take a class or two on the side and be able to have it paid for. So does the guard allow you to pay into that like active duty does? And then do you get the post 9-11 as well? Yeah, so we, we give all of our members the Montgomery GI Bill, and you don't have to opt into it or pay for it anymore. So that's kind of nice. When I joined 18 years ago, you had to pay 1200 bucks to get the education benefit. Things have definitely evolved and improved. So, so they not every, require the payment at all, like period? Even yeah, for at all, at all. What? I know, right? Where's my 1200 bucks? I was ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, think you, I think if you opt out of it, though, you get your 1200 back if you don't use it at all, if you opt out. 
I, I've heard you, I haven't heard that. I have heard that if you finish, if you exhaust the benefit, then you'll get your 1200 back. But the oh, it, stuff changes all the time. You know, you just got to stay attuned to it. So that's why videos like this, me putting the information out there and, and, and Airman Vision putting out the information is so helpful. And it can um, change over time too. So always make sure you're trying to look up. This is kind of just like a guide or a reference. So then make sure you're double checking with what the current standards are. Absolutely. So, so every air guardsman gets the Montgomery GI bill. Now that's only good while they're in. So I do encourage the member, like if you're planning to go to school as an air guardsman, go to school while you're in. Cause that's, so when that's, that's different than active duty because right. you get it while you're in, but you also get it while you're out. So, so the active duty gets nowadays they're getting the post 9-11 GI bill, which is far more robust. Uh, you do have to serve at least three years of active time to get the post 9-11 GI Bill on active duty. You can get the post 9-11 GI Bill on, in the Air Guard, right? You just have to serve at least 90 days of, excuse me, not 90 days, three years of full time, right? And it, and it does have to be uh, federal orders. So that's kind of like deployment orders. So it, it can be hard to get on the Air Guard side to get the post 9-11 GI Bill, you know, because you essentially have to do you know, three years of deployments or, you know, average Air Force deployments is like six months. So that's like, you know, six deployments that you're doing, right? Which is kind of a lot for an Air Guardsman. Yeah. Uh, but you can get partial, like you, there, it's not unheard of for Air Guardsmen to do one or two deployments and do like, you know, 30% of a post 9-11 GI Bill, things like that, and still use some of that benefit. What, what I encourage is really just figuring out what school you want to go to because the education benefits that the Air Guard gives are a lot of times more than enough, you know, because you're already getting a full ride. You're already getting, you know, I, I was talking about doing some simple math, like a, an 18 year old who joins the Air Guard and goes to a, a Cal State that's like a local college, a local four year college, right? Where you could easily pick up the tab for college and then they would have about, you know, maybe $900 into their bank account in addition. That's because of the Montgomery GI Bill, which is 350 ish, right? And then the Montgomery GI Bill kicker, which almost doubles it. And then their their drill pay, which is $200. So the cumulative of all, all those three would be about $900. Imagine that, you're, like you're an 18 year old going to college, Air Guard member, local college, you're getting 900 bucks in your pocket in your bank account each month from the Air Guard and they're picking up the tab for tuition. So that can be more than enough, yeah. obviously. To, to, to survive and thrive as a college student. So I, I do just encourage to break down the math and see if it all makes sense. In most cases, it will. It's more than enough. We talked about this in other interviews uh, with you. If you guys haven't seen those on the channel, be sure to check those out. I'll have those linked in the description. But... And, and I know a lot of this stuff can sound confusing, kind of like what you're talking about, being a resident yeah. in one state, being an Air Guard member in another state and going to school in yeah. one of those states. So we, we the nice thing is, Majority of the members of the Air Guard in that in your your wing are, are part time and they're probably going to school. So there's a lot of help around. Yeah. You know, you can talk to we have a retention manager at each wing who can help you kind of plan this out. We usually have different college POCs. And now every college has a like a military liaison at the college. So there's so much help around to, to help you weed through the math and figure out what what's best. But I, I would will tell you it's never been a better time to be a, a veteran student you know you know there's never been as many benefits as there are now you know the, the big advantage with the air guard is just giving you that time that's the difference maker that yeah. time to go to college so with the gi bill one of the big benefits that a lot of people have when they commit to hey i'm going to do 20 years right so if i join and i'm going to do 20 years and i know i'm getting that gi bill but if I'm doing 20 years, I'm going to retire. I'm not interested in going to college, getting a degree, all that stuff possibly. So I want to pass that on to my kids or my spouse. So that's one of the benefits of the GI Bill in active duty. Do you get that same opportunity in the guard? I know you had just hit on, you know, you have to serve a certain amount of time to get the post 9-11. Can you pass that on to your kids or spouse while you're in the guard? So, so the Montgomery GI Bill, you cannot. The post 9-11 GI Bill, you can so if you if somebody has the post 9-11 GI Bill, whether they've earned that through uh, activated time in the Air Guard, like like deployments like we were talking about, or their Palace Chase, Palace Front coming from active duty, right? 
They just need to transfer it over to their, their spouse or, or family member. You do incur a four-year service commitment thereafter. So, okay. so a lot of times what, what active duty members run into is like, well, I want to transfer it to my spouse or my kid, but I didn't have that kid when I was, or spouse when I was in, right? So by joining the guard, you can still have that. You can join the guard, transfer it over, incur that four-year service commitment, complete it, and be able to do that. So that's yeah. another I didn't even think there. about that. So like technically, I could shave my beard and cut my hair, join the guard, and if we have a kid, I could transfer it right. if I commit for four more right. years. There you go. Nice. So there's always a backup plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's the same way with active duty. You have to, in order to transfer it to your spouse, you have to do that reenlistment commitment and say, hey, I'm going to serve this much longer because you guys are going to extend this benefit to my 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 child or my wife so that's good to know that the air national guard offers that same opportunity as well so being a recruiter i'm sure you get tons of questions about college education tuition is there anything else that you can think about or that you want to shed some light on or share uh, that might help people out because i know this is probably one of the biggest subjects that you get asked about because this is a big reason why so many people join the military in the first place yeah, no, the, the main thing I want to highlight is experience. I think that's what we offer a college student that college in of itself won't get you, right? You have to think there's there's so many people getting college degrees now. So when, when you do apply for that first job in that field that you've studied for the last four years in college, how do you differentiate yourself from every other applicant that has the same exact degree as you? Right. So experience in the air guard is a great way to differentiate yourself and get that job. Much like you mentioned the veteran preference, there's a there's a you know an unconscious veteran preference because of the the work ethic, the discipline, and that experience that you've proven by by being a member of the Air Guard, right? And then one more you know to add to that, if you're already getting legit experience in the medical field, the IT field, law enforcement field before you apply for that job, but while you're in college in the Air Guard, come on, that's a that's a winning combination. So that's that's why I encourage you know those clever college students to really think about it. It's worth your 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 one weekend a month to do this. So you are the person who gets that job when you apply the first time. That's awesome. It's uh it's almost like you're the like when you go to look up a restaurant to eat at and you look at the reviews right. And if there's no reviews, you're like, what kind of sketchy restaurant is this? Yeah. It has no reviews, right? But like that's kind of what it is. Like a company is more likely to want to hire you possibly if they're like. Well, you already have experience, right? Like, you know, it's it's like, well, yeah, you have a building and you say you're a restaurant, like that's your degree. But like, do you have the experience? Like have people been able to vouch for you? And having that job experience is kind of a good way to, yeah, get that. You're not just getting the education aspect, but having that experience to that proof that you can fulfill that job. So college and tuition, that's a huge aspect of why people join the military. I think we hit a lot of key subjects. If you guys have any other questions about college or tuition or anything like that, be sure to leave them down below. We'll be trying to get some more videos in the future uh, if Tech Sergeant Costa is willing to work with us again, or if any other recruiters out there are willing to uh, make videos on education aspects, if we have anything that went unanswered in this video. But go ahead and reintroduce yourself, who you are, how people can contact you, or if they're interested in joining the Air National Guard in another state outside of California, uh, where they can go for that. Yeah, th thank you, Airman Vision, for this opportunity. I, I love that we can put out this information, everybody, so they make the best choice for them. If you've got any more questions about the California Air Guard, feel free to send me a text or give me a call. My phone number is 805-415-7269. Again, that's 805-415-7269. And if you're not looking at California, you know, feel free to just Google your state air guard. So Florida Air National Guard or Georgia Air National Guard is just some examples or look at our national website, which is goang.com, G-O-A-N-G.com. Thank you.